the season. And thanks for all the parents coming in. Uh, I'm proud to present this proclamation. I'll go ahead and read it. Whereas the Poland girls soccer team won the New York State Class D championship by defeating Shad Gay with a score of 3 to 2 in a double overtime match on Sunday, November 18, 2012, at Red Field, SUNY Cortland. And whereas the Tornadoes went to this championship game with a 20 win, 1 tie, 0 loss record after playing and beating third ranked Jasper Troopsburg at Homer High School. And whereas the team, Dakota Allen, Abby Baker, Brianna Goggin, Brittany Green, Hannah Mahoney, Elizabeth Oskowski, Kirsten Backus, Morgan Broadbent, Lexi Darrow, Alyssa Lepper, Shelby Ascent, Tara Siegel, Katie Shellhammer, Paige Sullivan, Harley Zarek, Courtney Green, Sage Hampston, Elise Hazard, Kara Morrison, Michaela Blumenstock, and Cheyenne Irwin has been led to this great victory by Coach Tom Basil and Assistant John Allen. And whereas the Poland Tornado soccer team and its coaches have brought great credit to themselves, their school, their families, their village, their town, the county of Herkimer, and the state of New York. Now therefore it be resolved that Vincent J. Bono, Chairman of the Herkimer County Legislature, do deem it fitting and appropriate to proclaim Thursday, December 20th, 2012, as the Poland Girls Tornado Soccer Team Day in Herkimer County and urge the residents to join in the celebration. First and most important thing I, I would say as far as our team is concerned is that the support from the community was overwhelming, not only during the Final Four weekend, but leading up to the Final Four weekend, from the Columbus Day Tournament to the preseason, uh, to pasta dinners, to parades through town, through fireworks displays, we had it all. And uh, we have a lot to be proud of in the community as the start of it all. Thank you. By the way, ladies, this this doesn't mean you get the day off tomorrow. <laughs> I just fall and they did. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you got more power well. <laughs> That's a gym ball. I mean, I had my own day, I would be not going to sit down. Very nice. I'll call Jay Line to uh, come up and give his presentation and see all you can see in 50 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, 
seven minutes left, Jake. <laughs> Good evening, and thank you for having me to, tonight to make a presentation on the capital construction projects that the highway department completed in 2012. I handed out these documents to you. It has all the projects that we completed this year. And if you can go through them, it has more detailed descriptions of each project and it has pictures in there of the before and after shots of projects that were completed. There were seven projects completed. Actually, uh, one is in the process of being completed. Five road projects, one bridge superstructure, um, and we had, we're in process of, of, of completing an engineering design on a bridge that we want to construct next year, proposed for construction next year. That's the um, Hawthorne Road Bridge. The total project cost was $3.25 million. And we rehabilitated, reconstructed approximately 10.58 miles of road. The funding sources for the, for the projects were $2.7 million in chips, uh, $400,000 in county road fund maintenance funds, and we received a $150,000 settlement from the windmill project development. The projects were, and this, I can, these, this, this uh, map is in your handout, um, the map and the pictures are in, the, are in your handout, but uh, the projects were concentrated in the northern portion of the county, north, north, northeasterly portion of the county, with the exception of up in the town of Webb, we did South Shore, about 0.8 miles of South Shore reconstruction. That was uh, road reconstruction. And a uh, detailed description of the, the, the projects are included in the documents. Uh, this was a, an effort of contracted work, contractors, and county highway crews that were involved in the projects. I want to commend the highway department crews for the work that they did on these projects to make them successful as, as, they, as uh, we proceeded during the, the construction season. Um, so each one of the projects were completed except for the uh, design should be complete on the high Hawthorne Road Bridge should be complete by the end of the year. And we're proposing to go construction next year on the Hawthorne Bridge. That's all I have. Any questions? Jay? Yes. Uh, two comments I would have while, while, you're, while you're saying this. Uh, your anticipated capital construction program for this year is similar in cost and nature to this? Yes. In, in the, again, in a different quadrant in the county, yeah. correct? We're, we'll be in the southern tier. Um, the road projects will primarily be in uh, the southwestern quadrant. Uh, we do have three bridges still. One bridge is a carryover from previous years. It's uh, Creek Road Bridge. That's a federally funded project. Uh, it's been five years in the making. And we're hoping that we can go out to bid 2013, construct that bridge in 2013. Uh, we've got eight projects planned for next year, eight road projects, and uh, three bridges. So it will be a pretty aggressive year again. And another comment I would have in general, numerous other counties in New York State address this work by they take the CHIPS funding and then what they do is they say, now we're going to bond for the rest of it and keep adding it to an ongoing laundry list of bonded indebtedness. Berkmer County comes up with the money one way or another and funds these projects in full and doesn't have an ongoing, growing uh, uh, bonded indebtedness and a debt service that they have to come up with each year. And, and for the size of our system and what we're able to accomplish, I, I think we work miracles. And uh, kudos to your department for uh, being able to advance the program that we've got with the limited resources that we do have. Thank you. Okay. That southwestern portion. Yes. Is, is that part of Frankfurt or some of Frankfurt or yes. all of Frankfurt? It's all of Frankfurt? No, it's uh, it's pretty much the whole Frankfurt section. Yes. <coughs> yes. It's in green here. And that uh, involves Frankfurt, 
Richfield, German Flats, Columbia, and Winfield. Uh, this portion over here is part of our, our, our um, maintenance program too. It's, uh, it's our slurry seal is over in this side of the section. So the whole southern tier, there's going to be work on the whole southern tier next year. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll continue on. Uh, a word of comments by residents, and I guess they keep the comments at five minutes apiece for a total of 30 minutes. And we have one person, Carl Streeter, signed up for the million, and his uh, subject matter is the closed jail. Yeah. Is it yes, Mike, then? I believe it is. Can you turn that up for the floor? I don't think you do I? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, first things first, happy holidays to you all and your families. I hope that uh, uh, they're blessed. In my new time. 55, 50, 63. 69, 59, 57, 53, and 62, 54, 55, 57. Mean anything to you? Those are the average, average daily population at the jail over the last 11 years. I know our chairman is on record as saying that the numbers that uh, we who feel different about the jail bring forth are made up, made up in a negative connotation. I have to agree with them. They're made up, but they're made up of numbers that come right out of our budget, your budget, my budget, our budget, they come out of the proceedings, our proceedings, they're right out of the county documents. There's nothing <coughs> negatively made up. They're made up of good, solid, factual numbers. I say again, all those 50s, that averaged out to 58 over 11 years. Do these numbers sound familiar? 130, 154, 220. Those are the numbers that are being proposed by you to house 50, 58. 130, 154, up to as many as 220. I ask you to rethink that. Uh, consider that 130 is more than twice. 150 is twice. 220 is three and a half times what is required to accommodate 58. And I know uh, you, need, you have the problems of segregation that you want to be occupying only about 80% of your capacity. I struggle to understand why you are promoting 130. Of course, we remember that our paid guns at $2.8 million for this project, LaBella, are saying we need 150, 179, 194. These numbers are not at all consistent with reality. The new budget just fortifies the position that we on the opposite side take. The jail is up by jail costs, are up by, uh, I don't have that number, I've got the staffing costs are up by 6%. That's in itself uh, pretty startling. Uh, I think the jail costs are up 1.2%. Uh, but if you look at at those numbers, uh, with a total cost of uh, $3.7 million, with a budget plan for another 1.2 to board out, we're at $4.9 million for 58 people. That's about $86,000 per minute. That's about $235 per day. I can go down to the Mark, Marriott Marquis on Times Square for 135 The total appropriations are 99 million. If you take out the 4.9 that we're assigning to the uh, 58 bad guys, that leaves about 91 million for the balance of the good people at the time, the good citizens, the 64,000 of us. To me, the citizens are getting about $1,400 of services from the county per year. About uh, 60 times or less than what you're proposing for the inmates. 
And remember, these are inmates. This is a system uh, of a, a punitive system. These people are to be punished for failing to obey the laws that we all that we all obey, the laws that we've set up as a community to make ourselves safe and, and solvent. And these people, for some reason, aren't able to live by those laws. We declare they should be punished. Well, you don't put them in a quarter of a million dollar cell. I don't think you put them in a quarter of a million dollar cell and punish them. That's far from it. So I ask you once again, uh, think about these numbers. I've sent them all to you. I've mailed them to you. I've emailed them to you. I've tried to get them into the newspaper. And I'm going to keep making these public until every one of the 64,000 people in this county realize what a boondoggle is being proposed here. We can't let it happen. And you people are sinful to not letting it happen. Think about it. Use your heads. You're all smart, man. Thank you very much. On communications. Uh, communications received by the legislature on the previous Wednesday have been heard and are listed on the agenda. Does any member of the legislature request mention of any particular communication? There are none. We'll move on. Pursuant to Rule 6, report to the standing committee. I'll ask any chairman uh, if they have any uh, synopsis of progress on their committees. Any chairman wishing to speak? Come on. Now, We'll consider the consent agenda. Will the clerk please read the title of each resolution of the consent agenda? 292 is public safety emergency management with the monthly report of the sheriff. 293 is human resources, ways and means with temporary coverage and mental health. 294 is human resources, ways and means with a contract with the state for funding for early intervention. 295 is planning and development, ways and means with an application for matching funds under the State Tourist Promotion Act. 296 is Planning and Development Ways and Means concerning guarantee of 2013 matching funds. 297, Ways and Means contract with Adirondack Park Local Government Review Board. 298, Ways and Means contract with Mid York Library for 2013. 299, Ways and Means contract with the nonprofit organizations for the year 2013. 300 is Human Resources Ways and Means authorizing bid, bids for billing service for public health. 301 is transferring funds from Ways and Means. 302, Planning and Development Ways and Means space permit agreement with Resource Center for Independent Living. And 303 is Natural Resources Ways and Means awarding bids for chemicals at the sewer district. Mr. Ross. Mr. Chairman, on 293, we need to um, uh, amend it. The second line where it says to be deployed. Needs to say contract for the amendment. Yeah. Second. Mr. Hendricks. Mr. Smith. Any debate? Mr. Brooks. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The old pass. Mr. Brooks. The rate of pay reference in this resolution at 122.50 um, is that there's another resolution in here raising that. Is it the intention that this should be written at the old rate and then increase with the resolution that increases the psychiatric services? The rate of psychiatric services? Say that again. This, this 122.50 is what we're currently paying. There's right. a resolution in here raising the amount that we're paying for psychiatric services to uh, I can put my fingers on it. Okay. Uh, raising the rate. Mr. Um, Wallace, you want to? That's right. Yeah. Oh, That's correct, Mr. Rule. I don't want to get ahead of so. so this is to establish at the given rate in case the other resolution doesn't pass. That's right. Thank you. We have a motion on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Russell, second by Mr. Klitschko. <coughs> Any debate? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Consent agenda will pass. Thanks. Number 304. Mm -hmm. Committees on Ways and Means, Committee on Ways and Means, adopted Introductory Local Law 3 for 2012. This resolution adopts Introductory Local Law number 3 for the year 2012 entitled The Local Law Increasing the Salaries for Some Elected Officers and County Officers Appointed for a Fixed Term During Their Term of Office. May I have a motion? Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Poplinski. Any debate? Mrs. Russell? Mr. Chairman, um, are any of these individuals refused to accept the increase rate? I, I was under the impression that at least one among them had refused. Not have that I'm aware. Okay, thank you. Any more debate? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm, I'm sorry, it's a roll call. Correct. Call the roll. Eckerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Korts. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. No. 
Rose? No. Schrader? Yes. Lenine? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Hendricks? Yes. Hi? Yes. Brzezinski? Yes. Mano? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bono? Yes. Thank you. And resolution passed. Number 305. Also Ways and means amend the resolution 286 adopting salary status. This resolution. This resolution amends resolution number 286 to reflect changes in the salary schedule of this May motion. Mr. Rose, a second. And Mr. Poplinski, Mr. Hyde. Any debate? Mrs. Rose. Mr. Chairman, I'm a little confused on this. Last meeting, we adopted salary schedule one, two, and three. What are, What is this doing? Adopting. I thought we adopted one, two, and three at the last meeting. Didn't we? Yeah. Yes, these are, these are the changes that we've been talking about, Mrs. Rose, for the last month or so. Is there a delineation of what those changes are? Yes. Is that here? No, I have it in front of me. Um, I think I've shared all of them with you, but not in this form. I'm more than happy to give that to you. I would love it, because okay. I, I'm a little bit confused on the... Uh, these, uh, I, I definitely would like that. I, I, I am aware of the real the resolution in here, Mr. Chairman. I, I guess I do need to more fully understand what it is we're voting on. I don't know if anyone else has got that list. But there is a resolution in here that's adjusting, as an example, the Real Property Tax Office, adjusting money down and allowing for unemployment. I don't know if those are the positions, if there's other positions. I, would it be acceptable to you, Mr. Chairman, to have Mr. Wallace read us the positions that are modified? I've got it front of me, sure. Uh, director of Patient Services added in Public Health Nursing, uh, two supervising uh, CHNs at reduced salary rate of 45000 uh, delete Assistant Director of Public Health Nursing, delete one assessor uh, real property tax, delete real property tax service aid, uh, senior microcomputer specialist at 19.5 hours a week at a salary of 20000 delete an LPN and PHN, delete an office assistant and PHN, Delete a data entry operator in DSS. Delete a cook at the country manor. Delete a food service helper in the country manor. Mr. Chairman, may we know how many of those positions are currently um, filled? Mr. Billings, you want to answer that? Or? I definitely need to. Either. Oh, go ahead. Just give me a second. I'm gonna, I don't want to you know, say it wrong. One, two, three, four. Six. Six out of a total of how many, Mr. Chairman? I, I wasn't keeping track, but Mr. Walsh. Twelve. 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 So good half of them are currently filled. Correct. Mr. Yes. Um, so it, it is my understanding that these were funded positions in 2012, and um, six of them have become vacant in 2012. And I'd like to be corrected in any where my understanding is incorrect. And six of them are currently filled, but will be made vacant either uh, at the start of 2013 or at some point in 2013. Is that correct? I, I believe that's the, the case. Mr. Billings, am I correct? There's there's several different Scenario. scenarios. Uh, I think uh, our new acting director of public health brought some changes to us. Those are three of the people. Uh, some one of those positions is staying uh, as we. Uh, the long-term care program and the CHA are uh, brought to a conclusion hopefully by January 31st. We were hoping to do that by 1231. Uh, we were instructed that that was not going to happen, so that's where three of the changes uh, will happen. Uh, the, in her presentation, she asked that we delete the assistant director. Uh, we agreed to that. Uh, also delete the LPN and delete the office assistant. That person is filled. The two people in real property are there uh, till the end of the year and will not be there uh, effective 1 1 2013. I'm sorry, Mr. Russell, you had your hand up? Yeah, I just want to uh, make a note, Mr. Chairman, that uh, even though it says 2013 legislators, legislators are not receiving a raise within this resolution. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, and I appreciate that Jim shared all of the individual pieces. 
the, the changes in the public health department were aired in an open meeting and explanations were delivered in an open meeting for us to uh, process and understand and if any citizens chose to uh, be here or observe or sit or televised by the concerned citizens, they'd be informed. The real property situation um, has not, to my knowledge, been discussed in an open meeting. The um, understanding that we would be losing an assessor and a data collector may be necessary. I know that this, um, this body has listened over the last few years about the lack of uh, revenue for contracts with municipalities to do our assessing and our um, data collection for them. However, this is not discussed in an open meeting. We have, uh, not to impugn the new department head there, but we have someone relatively new. Um, I am concerned that um, what happened in the salary schedules we're taking a data collector position that was a temporary uh, hourly position, and the salary schedule that was adopted last week got by me, uh, last month or whenever we met in November, that we were creating a uh, full-time salary senior data collector. Uh, we have the individual who had been the data collector that had been promoted to the temporary hourly senior data collector, and the salary schedule now, in effect, creates a senior data collector full-time. You're talking $17.43 an hour for an individual who's been here six years or whatever, based on the salary schedule that I looked at, going from a position that paid roughly $11.50 an hour. This is for a department that I think we all have understood that there has been not an adequate amount of um, revenue contracts to justify the kinds of salaries that we're putting forth. The problem I have with uh, adopting this is we're deleting two positions uh, without having, I think, a full airing of just how this department is going to operate and why it's those two positions. And uh, while the individual, I understand, I guess, the department head who has made this decision, I'm concerned that um, the um, is the person seasoned in that department to, to correctly make these. I would hope that there could be a presentation before this legislature about where this takes the department, where it leaves us with communities that have signed on with contracts for us. I know personally that Little Falls is very upset about this and has uh, suggested that they may well cancel our contract. I imagine there will be more formal discussion on that. I'm concerned that the particular positions that have been targeted, um, there are a, a questions surrounding those. Jim has been very straightforward in answering questions for me, but I was concerned that um, there's a perception that some people, uh, a person or persons could be protected while others are being sacrificed. Those are not my words, those are the words of people that have registered uh, questions about this. Uh, we have a situation in the city of Little Falls where there's uh, potential litigation on work that was done by the assessor and I understand it is a very hot political potato that there, it involves not-for-profits in the area, and the community may be well divided on what the outcome of the litigation on the assessments would be. But we have not had an airing. I have attempted to attend each and every budget committee meeting. I reserved every Friday morning from the second week of September till the second week of December. Unfortunately, you convened one on a Tuesday, and I was able to make arrangements to be there. The Thursday executive session where these changes were discussed, um, I was unable to be there. And until I found out about these layoffs, I did ask someone who was there, um, a couple of people, to, and uh, quite frankly, this particular topic um, skated their memory recollection. So I don't know how in-depth the analysis was. I'm not, I don't know how this can be corrected, if there's action that can be stalled, if there's a, appropriate to have a, um, an amendment to this resolution and what it does to the approval of our budget process, but I think that we are errant in going forward with the layoff of these two people without more fully understanding what's happening in that department. I would suggest that by creating a salary schedule that has a senior data collector and fully funding it as a permanent position, uh, we're leaving ourselves open because it's my understanding if it's a permanent <coughs> position, the department head is free to fill it without having to come back before this body. Um, I, I don't think this is a wise thing. And I would offer an amendment to resolution number 305 and request that the assessor and the um, 
tax. Mr. Maybe Mr. Wallace can fill in any real property tax specialist. Real property tax specialist. Both of those items remain funded in the budget until we receive a, a full presentation by the director of real property on where this department is going to be going. I make such motion. Motion is made. Is there a second? second. Mr. Hart. And I would ask a roll call vote. Debate. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ross. First of all, the department had to not make the decision. It was made within the Ways and Means Committee. And we've looked for five or six years in regards to the revenue generated within that department and realized that the revenue wasn't there, so we looked at positions. We did not look at people, we looked at positions that could be removed from uh, that department. It had nothing to do with the department head. Um, it was a meeting and executive session because any time we talked about positions that might, people's names might come up, we certainly want to uh, keep that confidential, especially if there's something that's going on within the, uh, within the meeting that could affect people. And um, we have five days after that if we should make a vote in an executive session to get that out to the public. In this case, we did uh, we did remove two positions, and we wanted to make sure that the that the uh, people in the union were going to be notified that was the position of the ways and means committee. Um, the revenue is just not there, and it hasn't been there, and it's not fair for the other municipalities that aren't taking these services to be paying uh, the amount of money. Um, for these two positions if we don't have to work. And that's pretty much what the Ways and, Mini Ways and Means Committee looked at. And we decided and um, went forward from that. Any more debate, Mr. Harden? Uh, yes. Uh, I do share Mrs. Rosa's concern about the lack of airing over this. I've learned one thing over the past few weeks. i got a lot, lot to learn now. Uh, how personnel changes are made uh, in this body. And I'm not saying it's made wrong, I just have a lot to, to learn about it. Um, there should be a public hearing. Um, you know, there is a perception out there that may or may not be true, whether it's related to um, what an assessor has done or hasn't done. I guess, but the one, the bottom line here is as one constituent mentioned to me tonight, um, how are we giving all these raises to individuals and um, in this case we're creating a senior data position that's in the very uh, department that we're laying off people. It, it just doesn't seem to make sense and um, that's one reason I would like more of a public hearing. Un unfortunately, I missed that executive session. I. Um, I'm not sure if it was during the day, but somehow I missed it. As far as discussing positions in executive session, I think I sent um, the relevant little clip of Mr. Freeman explaining that we simply should not go to executive session on that. If you didn't get the clip versus email, I'll, um, I'll send it to you again. Um, and I'd also like to point out that when the Salary schedules number one, two, and three, we had asked that some that they be severed so we could vote on these things separately. I, for one, think that CSEA deserves the raise, um, although our department heads and officers uh, do a fine job, I think, due to the economy, and especially <coughs> since we're laying people off, that we should have severed that and voted on those separately. Um, but I will not vote against raising a, a raise for the union. Um, again, I, I just think there should be a public hearing of what's going on in the assessor's office, why we are creating a new position and a, a substantial raise when we're um, laying other people off. Mr. Ross, Mr. Chairman, um, there was two data collectors there. We now have one. We've removed that data collector there. And um, I think people need to know that. There's, there's this stuff about something political. Um, we knew nothing about anything political. 
within our meeting, and you can have your conspiracy theories all you want, but there was nothing in the meeting that was political. If you were there, you would have known. I'm sorry that you weren't there, but it was pretty, it was pretty uh, obvious, and for, for you to say that there's no bearing on it, you can go back five, six, maybe even seven years, because I've been here for that long for every budget cycle there's been. So we've talked about it. There's no revenue coming in that will meet the needs of the department, or there's not enough revenue, I mean. It's as simple as that. Is there anyone else on this side of the room? <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, my good friend, Mr. Russell, and I have gone round and round on this issue for five or seven years. And um, there's no doubt that the county has subsidized this operation on behalf of the municipalities. And uh, that gap has widened in, in recent years. So um, as we replaced our uh, department head, we gave her notice that there needed to be constriction in that office for, for uh, economic purposes and fairness purposes. Um, and so the she made a recommendation indirectly to the committee, and the committee came up and supported this recommendation that she did make that this was the way to go, to reorganize, reorganize her department this way and still get the work done that we have contracted for. Now, if the situation in the city of Falls resolves itself and this person is still on unemployment, we're definitely going to not want to pay unemployment. We're going to want to get back to work with a meaningful contract and, and get the work done. Or if other contracts come in and this skilled individual is still available, we aren't going to want to pay unemployment insurance. I mean, that's every person in Herkimer County's responsibility to pay that, and it's a cost to that department. So uh, this isn't because we want to do this. This is uh, a reorganization of and delineation of the work that needs to be done, and it's, it's the right way to go. It's a hard way to go, but it's the right way to go at this time for that department. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Schrader, is Uh I just want to make a note that uh, after listening to all the other legislators, uh, Mr. Kors, uh Mr. Russell, and uh, the other two, I look at it, if we're seeing that the, uh, the department's losing money, why are we advancing a gentleman, uh, without naming any names, into a higher position, which is costing the department more money? If the department's not making any money, why are we advancing uh, the person into a higher position to cost the department more money? Uh, I feel you will get a no vote on this for me. It's nothing about the other part. It's about the real property for me. I just feel that uh, if the department's losing that much money, they should have kept the uh, titles how they were and went from there. Mrs. Rose. Mr. Chairman, there's a couple of issues on this that, that I think need to be rebutted. Um, the, there is no record in any minutes of the committee that there was a vote taken to abolish these positions at least the minutes that I read online. That does give me a concern. I also have had reported to me by one of the individuals that back in May, following grievance day in the city of Little Falls, the employee uh, of our county was told by uh, people of influence in, that in the city of Little Falls, wouldn't it be a shame if you lost your job at the county? Now, that might have not been whispered in our ears. I'm not suggesting it was, but I can tell you that the county was told about that. I can tell you that the people in the city of Little Falls were told about that. I can tell you that the city attorney was told about that, and that took place in May. It's, it's just, I'm telling you that they were told. Did that follow through with this decision? I guess I'm hearing you say no, that no one understood. The fact airing in an open meeting, I appreciate what Mr. Dennis, uh, Dennis Corse has said, because I've been here now for almost five years, and I know that there's been discussion. I tried to say that when I made my first remarks. The problem I have with it is there has been no open discussion that we have these contracts, and these contracts that we have require this kind of effort, this many man hours, this title to render those services. We haven't seen any of that. We have a new department head, and um, she gave, I don't know how Dennis phrased it, a recommendation. This is a department head that is so new that we're paying people to come in and train the person in the job. We're paying money to do that. We should, because apparently the state reneged on their willingness to do that. 
But this is important. When, when Mr. Kors says if the situation with Little Falls resolves itself because we don't want to pay unemployment, we're going to be adopting a resolution that puts the money in there to pay the unemployment, acknowledging that that's what we're going to do. Little Falls has a contract with us. They're threatening perhaps to cancel that contract because the individual who they believe has served them well, the individual who has taken the tough road in, in terms of a decision that the individual has rendered and will be litigated, uh, could have taken an easy road. It's a political hot potato. This, the people in, in the, um, that have been um, received a negative uh, determination by the assessor um, are very concerned. It's a not-for-profit in the community. Those are things that will be aired in the court. But we are taking the role position of deleting the individual who renders those services. I have not heard anyone say that we have checked our uh, resources among the people that we have, and we have adequate staff to step up to the plate to carry the existing contracts. That haven't, they haven't had that dialogue, and it didn't happen that day. If it's been happening someplace, I, I've heard we don't have enough contracts to do it. And Mr. Russell or Mr. Poor said it's not fair to let the rest of the county have to bear the cost. It may be true, but is it an assessor and a data and a uh, real property, whatever that title was, or should it be a data collector, should it be a senior? To take a position, to create a permanent position and put it in our salary schedule, and right now we have all of the flexibility in having it be an hourly. Is, is questionable, and the rates associated with it is questionable, and I don't understand why we're doing it. If one looks at timing, I made calls to Mr. Wallace, I made a call to Mr. Billings. I was told that this individual was probationary. If that individual was probationary, he would have been sitting on a permanent position. If you're in a temporary position, I don't believe there is a probationary period. Well, now all of a sudden, I guess he's not probationary, and the probation position would be filled come January when we create this new salary schedule. If we are going to be reducing services in our county and people are going to be losing their jobs, I believe, and this is not a union requirement, I think it's a moral requirement, that we should be saying to our staff, before they go out the door, we're going to see if there's any place that your services can be utilized. You are going to be laying off an assessor who used to be a data collector for us, and yet you promoted a data collector to a senior data collector who doesn't even have the same years of experience. So the comment, last in, first out, well, technically that may be true based on seniority, but we know that the people going out the door may well have, and in some cases do have, more seniority than the individual that we're promoting. It just doesn't seem that it's been given enough thought, and I certainly hope that the people in the room will say, you know, let's, let's just drop back on this, and, and you know, there's other things that are funded in this budget that we don't expect to fill. I think this should be rethought so that we can all have, all of us in this room, have a better understanding on how this department is going to operate. For the record, I, I believe the vote was taken in executive session. Mr. Russell. Um, I, just want to make, I just want to make it known, and I need to correct something that Mr. Ford said. It was not the recommendation of the department head. We asked the department head if this scenario would work. She said yes. We asked Mr. Wallace what he thought in regards to the uh, contract and how that might work. Um, it was talked about. In regards to the uh, personnel issue with the data collector, the, that is the union's position to uh, agree with, which they, I believe they have. And uh, in regards to any bumping rights, those people who are laid off, if they have any bumping rights, uh, the union will be certainly working on their behalf to see if they can bump into that senior data position. So again, we looked at um, positions and we did not look at people. If you want to make this political, I guess you can, but there was nothing political within our meeting. I know you want to because there's always conspiracy, but there was no conspiracy here. Mr. Popinski. I believe we have an amendment for a motion on the floor with a second. Move that amendment. Motion to move the amendment. Second. Mr. Hendricks. All my board, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. You, you made the comment that this was done in executive session. Is it reported publicly? Yes. It's in the minutes? Yes. And it says deleting the positions and laying off the people? Yes. The vote was taken. The motion was made and seconded for the uh, call of the motion. May, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Well, I asked for a roll call, Mr. Chairman. Too late. It's, it's over. I asked for it when I spoke, Mr. Chairman. And the vote was already, I asked for the vote. It started. 
I asked, you? I asked when I made my yes. statement, I asked for a vote. On the amendment, but this is on the... Okay. This is on the, I'm on the vote. This is, this is, this is moving the question. Okay. All those in favor, again, aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion's moved. Motion on the, uh, I'm sorry, vote on the resolution, on the amendment. Uh, roll call. Could we call the roll? Hartman? Yes. Rose? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Manee? No. Johnson? No. Hendricks? No. Hyde? No. Brzezinski? Yes. Mano? Yes. Smith? No. Bono? No. Ackerman? No. Kaplinski? No. Course? No. Russell? No. Shaw? No. Weekly? No. Yes. We'll call on the resolution to pass. Defeated? Well, yes. And it's defeated. Are we done debating? I'll go to the resolution. May I have a motion, Mr. Kofanski? I, uh, I said we'll go to the resolution. I, I need a motion. All right, make a motion. Make a motion by Kofanski, second, <coughs> then Mr. Hendricks. Any debate on the resolution? Mr. Harvey? Yes, um, this is. Well, yes, we already have a question. Uh, the question on the amendment. On the amendment. No, no, no. 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 I understood the amendment. You moved the amendment. No. Right. Now we just moved the amendment. No. 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 Would you clarify what the motion is, Mr. Chairman? To move the resolution. It was a question on the resolution, so there's no debate. There'd be no debate. We, we had debate, we could essentially, here. Mr. Hendricks, second? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. No. Passes. No. Resolution passes. No, Mr. Chairman, that's the question on the resolution. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call on the resolution. I need a roll call. I need a motion and a resolution. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Roll call on the resolution. Clerk will call the roll. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. No. Rose. No. Schrader. No. Manee. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Brzezinski. No. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Course. Yes. Russell. Yes. 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 Okay, 306. Also, we're going to roll call. Uh, Ways and Means amending the 2013 tentative budget. <coughs> this resolution amends the tentative 2013 Hercule County budget to make the changes as listed. I know. May I have a motion. Yes. Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Hyde. Mr. Johnson. Any debate? Mrs. Rose. Just to highlight that this is the motion that uh, this will delete the salaries of those individuals that, uh, and also increase the uh, unemployment for um, putting in the unemployment for those individuals that uh, we'll be laying off. Thank you. Any other debate, Mr. Russell? I think the Democrats laid off somebody too that you got to consider that um, unemployment. So I think, you know, if we're talking about laying people off, I think they should be. People should be well aware of the fact that they made somebody out there. Thank you. But, Mr. Hartman. Uh, my comment is totally unrelated to the party and the party position. Good. Um, as far as the unemployment and, and the individuals, again, I state that I think we should have discussed what position. I understand we were talking about the assessment. Um, you know, the, the revenue is going down or whatever, but perhaps we could have made different changes. Um, and I just want to state that I admire anybody in any position, in any, any of our departments, who's willing to take a stand and um, take some heat when they do what they think is right and lawful. Um, that shows a great amount of courage. Anyone else? Mr. Rose. Mr. Chairman, I, it's incumbent on me to respond to Mr. Russell. The Democrats did not lay off anyone. The Democrats made an appointment. I understand that Mr. Uh, Russell may have personal views on this, but it would be inappropriate to characterize the Democrats as laying off anyone. The Democrats had the right to appoint, and they chose to appoint. They did not lay anyone off. The term expired. Thank you. Mr. Rangers. Uh, move the question. Move the question. Motion move second. Mr. Koplinski. All those in favor to move? Aye. Any opposed? Yes, 
Call up the, the amendment. Roll call. Hi. Yes. Krasinski. No. Miano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Course. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. No. Rose. No. Schrader. No. Menin. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Thirteen yes. Ways and means adopting the 2013 budget. This resolution adopts the budget of the county of Brickmark for the year 2013 as amended. I have a motion. So Mr. Russell, second. Second motion. By Mr. Gorse and Mr. Johnson. Any debate? Mr. Hart? Uh, yes. Um, well, for reasons we just talked about, um, I have some problems with the budget. Also, uh, as I brought up um, at the previous meeting, I think that uh, if we can't do it this year, we seriously have to consider giving the municip municipality back the 1% that was taken away a while back, so it was 2006 or whatever, the 1% um, share of the sales tax, because as I've stated a number of times, uh, those municipalities provide the public safety, plowing, and provide all the services to keep those businesses going as well as to keep this building and others going. Um, <clears throat> however, in spite of my problems with the budget, I think, um, you know, the department heads and, and my colleagues uh, did a good job with what we had to work with. I think it could be better. But uh, I, um, overall, uh, you know, he did a good job, and I'll be voting for it. I hope that we can really think about that one percent, um, you know, doing that one percent back, and uh, that's it. Mr. Hyde. I, uh, I agree with Mr. Hartman. I think that it should be referred to committee and possibly look at 2013, phasing it in uh, percentage-wise, 10, 15, 25 percent a year until we give them back their 1 percent. Mrs. Rose, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, he had his hand. Mr. comment, it's not 1 percent really, it's 600,000, right? That's what we're talking about. Uh, it's a time of this. It's a of the one percent. Of the one percent. Of the one percent. Right. A six hundred of the one percent. Anyways, my comment is I think this is a good budget and I want to thank all who worked on it. I will support it. But again, I'm disappointed once again that there's no bed tax. Uh, this could bed tax could be used for tourism, which along with agriculture are our two biggest industries. A bed tax would primarily be paid by people outside of the county. I don't think it would affect the hotel, motel business at all. When I call the reserve a room, I don't ask if there's a bed tax and how much it is. And I, I don't think too many other people do. So that's my yearly bed tax. So you are persistent. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, I had asked that uh, Mr. Wallace provide, and he did, uh, the amount of the bed tax that the list of any vacancies that are funded in this budget. As we take the 2013 tentative budget, of course it would be modified by the reconciliation that uh, Mr. Wallace spoke about in that one resolution, there's a variety of positions in here that are vacant. Not all of them are funded in the budget. It's, um, it's interesting to me, as I compare it to what was vacant last year and funded, certain positions, the senior public safety telecommunicator was one of those, and two public safety telecommunicators was two of those, there's four correction officers and three sergeants um, that are funded in the budget and are vacant and were vacant last year. And I believe in 2011 they were vacant. Uh, they were vacant in 2012 and vacant in 2011. Um, it's, you know, it's well over uh, $400,000 when we had fringe. The sheriff's department alone with the correction officers and the sergeants is, uh, you know, over 300000 when you had fringe benefits. Um, do we see the savings on that? Some would say, look what that boarding out has cost us. Well, I guess maybe what we're doing here is, uh, oh, this is going to make you crazy, and I can't think of another word for it, but padding with 300000 in there. Because we know we have a contingency. We have to go to the contingency at times uh, to take it. But there's, 
The fact that we could have over $400,000 in this budget on positions that are vacant, that have been vacant for two or three years, I question why we continue to have them in the budget. I think that they should not be funded and that we have a contingency and should the day come when there's uh, some reason why we're going to hire extra COs or extra sergeants, it should uh, stand the test of inquiry, stand the test of uh, justification, and at that point decide if it comes from the contingency or where it comes from. But to continually leave it in the budget and not have it be something that, uh, that has been filled over the course of uh, a few years, I, I find to be questionable. That's just one of the examples um, where um, I find the budget may not be as realistic as it could be, and um, I'm not going to be voting for the budget. More in principle, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be adequate votes in this room to pass it. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in time, say roll call. No. No. Schrader. Yes. Manee. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Rosinski. Yes. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Course. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. 16 Resolution passes. 308. Ways and means making appropriation for conduct of county government. This resolution makes appropriations for conduct of county government for year 2013. May I have a motion? Mr. Weekly, second. Mr. Kaplinski. Any debate? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. This is Rose. Mr. Chairman, can you refresh me? What what resolution? 308. 308. 308. No. It's a no. It's a no. <coughs> yes. Manine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Brzezinski. Yes. Nano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Course. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. 16. Resolution. Human resources, ways and means, authorizing amendment of agreement for services of the psychiatrist. This resolution authorizes an amendment of the agreement with Dr. Patil for provi to provide psychiatric services to the mental health department for up to 36 hours per week. May I have a motion? Mr. Uh, Smith, second by Mrs. Mini. Any debate? Mrs. Rose. Mr. Chairman, I just want to be certain that this is a contract and we're treating this individual as a contract employee and we know that the individual will not be, reviewed, be uh, uh, determined to have been an employee and said it is a contract. The correction was made in the... Uh, that, was the that was a different document. I want to be so This one is not saying employee, but I know that there have been questions uh, that can be asked by the Internal Revenue Service whether we hire someone as an independent contractor or as an employee. I want to be certain that this particular service has been reviewed and is appropriately classified as a contractor and not an employee. I'm afraid I can't shed much light on that. To the extent that it can be determined at our level, uh, everything has been done to make this an independent contractor position. Thank you. Anyone else? And this is voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 309 passes. 310. Human resources and ways and means increasing payment to contractors and mental health. This resolution authorizes increases for hourly rates for consulting psychiatrists to the mental health department effective January 1st, 2013. May have moments. Mr. Hyde, second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Hendricks, any debate? This is Rose. Mr. Chairman, I think that Mr. Scudder is talking to us about the mental health services and the provision of those has recognized and, and attempted to uh, educate us on how critically important having the appropriate psychiatrist available. And with the tragedies that our country has experienced last week, I think we all know that uh, mental health services are critical in our community. And I'll be supporting this, and I also will be asking that the mental health department keep us apprised of any shortfalls we have in delivering mental health services to those people in our community. The ones that come to our county mental health, I'm sure, in many cases are those of indigents with, uh, with little resources. And uh, it's so critically important that we stay on top of the needs and take appropriate action to keep our community safe and keep these individuals with mental illness safe. And I will be supporting this. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Mono, I have to agree with Mrs. Rose, and I just want to say that uh, 
you know, and, uh, we have to do this at a time where we've had incidents like this, and uh, mental health issue is huge. Too bad the state of New York is just backed away from doing anything possible to help out in this situation. I totally lack of that, so. We'll see what happens in the coming weeks. We'll yes. Anyone else? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution passes 311. Highways approving projects under Article 6, Section 116 of the Highway Law. This resolution approves the projects listed to be done with county road fund monies during the year 2013. I have a motion. Mr. Wheat, second by Mr. Shaw, Mr. Hyde. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Hyde, of course. Can Mr. You want to tell us what we expect to get in CHIPS funding for this construction? $3 million. And if the state of New York doesn't come through with that money in their budget deliberations in April, this doesn't get done. Yeah, correct. Anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Resolution passes 312. Roll call. Human resources, ways and means for a staffing change in the public health nursing service. This resolution approves the extension of the temporary part time senior clerk position in the public health nursing service. May I have a motion? Mr. Smith, second by Mrs. Maney and Mr. Shaw. Any debate? Mr. Rose. Uh, Mr. Chairman, when this was presented by our new acting director of uh, public health, the comment um, that we were told, I believe, at the time, is that the state has uh, fostered again regulations on us that are kind of crazy. And that if people would uh, come to our uh, clinic for uh, an immunization shot and they have private insurance, we must establish a separate a supply of vaccine separate from those that we would be doing for the indigent and we must then build the private insurance at the time this was presented i had asked um, why would we do this why don't we just say tell those who have private insurance that they can go to a local um, drugstore or to a local doctor and receive the immunization i do believe that immunization is critically important i'm concerned that we're setting in place a system uh, and expenses to um, bill and maintain an inventory for those people who have insurance that would pay for those. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, and I believe that uh, Mrs. Kane had indicated that they would look at this. I'm not going to vote against this, but I would ask for an update on how uh, we might get out of doing this completely and get out of the business of doing immunization for those with insurance and find out if there are adequate uh, community resources that the public with insurance can access so that we're not setting up the separate inventory, the separate billing for those who have the resources to get them elsewhere. Mr. Chairman, I, I did run into Mark Butler and Jim Seward and made them aware of uh, the complications this thing could create and uh, they're going to do some checking on it. But the comment I made or had made to me was those are the kind of things the state does that uh, they don't really look into as deep as they ought to. But the best way to resolve this is those who have private insurance, go to your doctor. Then it won't be a cost to the county. We can't do everything for everybody. What? <laughs> it, it does appear just from seeing the signs and advertisements that um, availability of flu shots is widespread. Um, virtually every drugstore and everything else does it. Um, hopefully we can have this discussion on whether we need to do it for, uh, for people with insurance. Uh, I went to the clinic and I had my shot at the clinic and I do have county insurance and the county pays the clinic so they're paying themselves. So I think we ought to encourage employees to use that. I'm sure if I go to Rite Aid or my doctor it's going to cost the county insurance twice as much. I could be wrong but it just stands to reason they set the clinic, they set the time, therefore those people are waiting for people to come in. If nobody goes, then we ought to do away with the clinic. But I don't think that's the case. So I think we ought to utilize our own services. It just seems to me it makes sense. I could be wrong. I just want to take this time to uh, compliment Mrs. King on uh, the presentation you gave us uh, as being the director, not the administrator over there. You came to us with a plan, showed us what it was. 
Uh, I think everybody, has, I could probably speak for all the legislators, we were all impressed with your uh, uh, demonstration on what you're going to do, and I look forward to working with you. Anyone else? Joe Paul? This resolution approves an extension for one month with the agreement with at home care partners to provide services to patients of Herkimer County Public Health Nursing Service under the long term care program. I have a motion. Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Shaw. Any discussion or debate? Mrs. Rose. Mr. Chairman, as, as I believe this was explained to us, this is necessary to go into uh, the month of January because the State Health Department has, yet not, has not yet acted on a request to close it. Um, it, it. I would just appreciate a comment on whether we are on track. Now we are at the, what, 19th of December. Are we still expecting that this would resolve itself by the end of January? Everybody's on the same schedule, mm -hmm. so we're waiting for each component to come and file a for each patient in order to actually enact that budget plan. But so far, everything is still on there. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed name? Resolution passes. Number 314 is out. Planning and development in connection with the Herkimer County Industrial Development Agency. This resolution confirms the findings of the Herkimer County IDA in connection with the Chopper Square Redevelopment Proposed Project. Plan of motion. Mr. Uh, Ackerman, second by Mr. Johnson. Mr. Kuklinski. Any debate? Mrs. Rose. Mr. Chairman, just again, this, this, I asked this question at the meeting and it was still um, confused, uh, it seemed to be the reply, of just what we are offering or what the IDA is offering and what the firm has requested in order to move forward the project for the, um, uh, you can see, price chart, whatever it's going to be that's going to Little Falls. Just uh, to know, to understand what the county will be agreeing to in this, if that can be clarified in any fashion. How long did you want to give your legal opinion of the inducement? I mean, it, it's pretty much boilerplate of what we've done in the, in the past with any other business. We've given their approval to, to move forward with it uh, and seek the funding that they need. I would, Mr. Chairman, I, we have very general terms here, and I would just say <coughs> that in the future it would be so helpful if the project will preserve permanent private sector jobs in the state, uh, like maybe a resolution can include some specificity on a particular project. I think it would help for posterity purposes and also um, memory uh, uh, prodding for some of us that don't have instant recall. That's in the resolve that if you want to read what we're providing. Preserve permanent private sector jobs. Prom uh, predominant purpose of the project is to continue to make available goods or services, which would, be, would not be. It's, it's all there in the result. Well, it's not telling you anything about the number of jobs. Or are we giving tax abatements? Are we giving, you know, are we giving pilots? Is not going to have to pay sales tax? Those kinds of things, an estimate of okay. whatever. I just it. think it helps as okay. people read it. Anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Resolution passed. 315. This resolution makes the appropriations for general fund to the council's listed. I have a motion. Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Ackerman. Mr. Kowalski. Any debate? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, aye. 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 Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Horse. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. No. Say no. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Lenine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendrick. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Resolution passes. Three fifteen. Three or three sixteen. Ways and means taking the foundation from the state. Point of order. Yeah. I, I, I misunderstood what the um, resolution was about. Can I have your approval? Uh, the quote's already taken, but it'll be noted that he did hold it. Yeah. I mean, uh, 
It wasn't a roll call yeah. vote, is it? How is it logged that way if it's not a roll call vote? This resolution makes the appropriation to the contingency fund to the accounts as listed. May I have a motion? Mr. Uh, Hendrick, second by Mr. Ackerman. Any debate? All those in favor? Uh, uh, roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. No. <laughs> yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Eck. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Course. Yes. Russell. Yes. Bon. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Manin. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hi. Yes. Brzezinski. Yes. So. 317 is a boy's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Ways and means authorizing insurance coverages. This resolution authorizes the policies of insurance listed for the year beginning December 9, 2012. And I have a motion. Mr. Hyde, second by Mr. Ackerman. Any debate? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Resolution passes 318. Ooh. Ooh. Ways and means, we levy unpaid school bills and city taxes. This resolution authorizes the relevy of unpaid school bills and city taxes in the amount listed. May I have a motion? I Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Corris. Mr. Hyde, any debate? Mrs. Rose. I wish I brought my list with me because this. And I don't have recollection on how it stacks up against previous years. But I'm to understand that this is the amount of unpaid school taxes and unpaid city and village taxes that get rolled over where we hold these municipalities harmless for this amount of money. And it wasn't it wasn't paid and we're going to we're rolling it forward and they're releveling it, relevying it. Um, I think it speaks to the pain in our community. I don't know how much of this is associated with the state of New York not paying on the uh, Adirondack area, but it is still over five million dollars in unpaid school taxes in our county, and a million and a half, excuse me, five, yeah, five million, and a million <coughs> and a half um, of um, unpaid city and village taxes. That's people, corporations, businesses, or whatever that have been were unable to pay their taxes. That's the correct assessment on my part. And we will now be leveling, levying those at a seven percent interest rate. And I think it speaks volumes to the to pain that's going on in our community. And it should, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's not lost on many people in this room. Thank you. I would just like to say that this resolution uh, definitely is a great help to the villagers and the town and the school districts because without this, Taxes would go unpaid and they'd go unchecked for years and years. About 25 years ago, when I was associated with the village, we lobbied for this. And we finally got it through because it made sense. Back then, each municipality didn't have a full time attorney, so these properties sat on the tax rolls and taxes didn't get paid. But at least this way, it's in check. So I would like to thank Kirkham County. Because it's a good program. It's expensive, but we do get our money back. Anyone else? Mr. Course. Mr. Chairman, the part of this that I don't find fair and, and I dislike is the fact that we front end the money for the state of New York and may not charge them interest or penalties. Only the exact amount, and that doesn't come due until after they adopt the budget in April. I don't know what the status is on our county taxes. I think they hold back the money until after April also, and are still uh, exempt from paying interest and penalties on those monies. And they're the biggest property taxpayer in this county. And, and they're off the hook as far as interest and penalties, where Joe taxpayer who hasn't or didn't isn't off the hook. Come on. Mr. Hendricks? This is a roll call vote. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Roll call. Clerk will call the roll. Hendricks? Yes. Hi. Yes. Brzezinski? Yes. Mano? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bono? Yes. Ackerman? Yes. Yeah. Kaplinski? Yes. Course? Yes. Russell? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Weekly? Yes. Hartman? Yes. Rose? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Manine? Yes. Johnson? Yes. 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 319. Ways and means adopting forms and footings. This resolution adopts the table for forms and footings. May I have a motion? Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Smith and Mr. Hyde. Any debate? 
All those in favor, call the roll. <laughs> Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Eakley. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Janine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Brzezinski. Yes. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Kors. Yes. Resolution passes. Halfway through. Three twenty. Ways and means levying consolidated health taxes. This resolution approves the levy of consolidated health taxes for the towns of Lisbon. May I have a motion? So Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Poplinski. Any debate? Clerk will call the roll. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Poplinski. Yes. Horse. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Menin. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hi. Yes. Krasinski. Yes. Mano. Yes. Resolution passes 321. Ways and means with the equalization table. This resolution adopts the 2012 equalization table for 2013. May I have a motion? Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Ruth and Mr. Hyde. Any debate? Clerk call the roll. Schrader. Yes. Janine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Brzezinski. Yes. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Horse. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Three, resolution passes 322. Easy means with the rubbing of taxes. This resolution adopts a levy of tax for the year 2013 as listed on the attached tabulation. May I have a motion? Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Smith. Any debate? Clerk will call the roll. Manine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Krasinski. Yes. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Horse. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Resolution passes under 323. 23 is ways and means levying taxes and assessments. This resolution adopts a levy for town budgets for the year 2013 as listed on the attached tabulation. May I have a motion? No. Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Lee. Any discussion or debate? And we'll call the roll, Mr. Lee. Ackerman. Yes. Yeah. Kaplinski. Yes. Horse. Yes. Russell. Yeah. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Menine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Brzezinski. Yes. Piano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Resolution passes. Three points. Planning and development making an appointment to the Herkimer County IDA. This resolution appoints Donna J. Frank as member of the Herkimer County Industrial Development Agency. May I motion? Mr. Poplinski, second by Mr. Johnson and Mr. Ackerman. Any debate? Mr. Rose. Mr. Chairman, when this was brought before the um, <coughs> planning and development, I suggested at the time, I think Mr. Frank is uh, uh, as the town um, supervisor as an individual who holds a responsible position with the not-for-profit in that area that's a large employer of people, may bring a perspective to the IDA that's important to the group. Uh, one of the concerns I have is that this legislature and that committee waits, it appears, in the time that I've been on the legislature, bring forward names that come to them from the IDA board themselves. And I think it would be wise that we uh, actively and aggressively search within our community for people that might be interested in stepping up to do such a task so that we can get perhaps a more diverse membership. The, uh, it's my understanding that the terms on the IDA at one point were five-year terms, but it appears now, um, unless this legislature takes action to the contrary, the person serves as long as they, uh, they wish to serve or as long as uh, this body is satisfied with their service. And, and I think that would be well to let the public know this can, this particular board, the IDA, and other boards that we have, um, non-paying and I'm certainly demanding of time, uh, but there may be people within our community that can bring another perspective 
Uh, when a group works together all of the time, they may tend to pick people who share like ideas and have like views, and I think sometimes it's good for the discussion and good for the solutions when we have more diverse opinions. I will be supporting uh, Mr. Frank on this, and I think that he will bring a perspective that when the IDA is taking action, and be it uh, pilots or whatever, on how it impacts local towns and um, municipalities, um, he brings that um, to the table. And um, I wish him well in this. Thank you. Two hours. I look forward to working with Mr. Frank also. And, um, I think he'd be a, a welcome addition to, to the board with his knowledge, uh, both uh, politically, publicly, and, and privately. So, uh, anyone else? And we'll call a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution passed. Through resources, ways and means authorizing contract for professional services. This resolution authorizes a contract with Nancy Rose Stormer and Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna to represent the county in connection with overburdened medical <coughs> reimbursement claims against the state of New York. I have a motion. Mr. Hander, uh, Mr. Uh, Smith. Second by Mr. Shaw. Any debate? Mr. Hartman. Mr. Chairman, can someone explain uh, a little bit in more detail what the overburdened Medicaid reimbursement claims are? I'm assuming we're going after something that we think is due to us. Correct. Okay. Mr. Seymour, do you sure. want to do that, Craig? Uh, I'll try to keep it it's kind of complicated, but it goes back to the sentence. Uh, overburden was occurred when certain category of uh, um, the locations were deinstitutionalized into the community. <clears throat> At the time, the premise was there would be no local share, local costs. That is not what happened. So eventually, some, um, how it happened, how it occurred, I don't know. But um, Mrs. Stone found her niche in seeking overburden for us um, in several other counties, as a matter of fact. And she's been relatively successful over the years to the tune of about $2.5 million in recoveries. Anyway, thanks. Thank you. I think it's important to know that what Tim shared with Mitty was that uh, we don't pay anything. If she recovers for us, she takes a piece from it, but the county is not experiencing any costs associated with it. And that's, that's a win win. Good deal. Anyone else? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 326. This resolution authorizes attendance at conferences for officers and employees during the year 2013 as listed. I have a motion. Mr. Wick is seconded by Mr. Russell. Any debate? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Resolution passes. 327. This resolution authorizes the payment of dues to the organizations listed for the county officers and employees of the county of Herkimer. I have a motion. Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Smith and Shaw. Penny to debate. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Resolution passes. 328. Eight is uh, ways and means approving the tax rules. This resolution adopts the execution and delivery of warrants for the collection of taxes. May I have a motion? So Mr. Hyde and uh, Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Russell. Any debate? Clerk will call the roll. Hartman? Yes. Rose? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Manine? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Hendricks? Yes. Hyde? Yes. Brzezinski? Yes. Mano? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bono? Resolution? Uh, yes. Ackerman? Yes. 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 Opposed? 3.30. The chairman and clerk certificate. This resolution authorizes the chairman and clerk certificate. May I have a motion? This is Manine, second by Mr. Hyde. Any debate? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Resolution passes. That's our last resolution of the year. Please be regular. Uh, we'll now go to comments by legislators. Mr. Forrest. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman. Tonight we discussed the possibility of reinstating the 1% sharing, the 1% sales tax. And that was a $600,000 figure. And, and it'd be nice to be Santa Claus and have that money to give back to them. But uh, when that 1% sales tax was passed in 1996, I sat in this chamber and we said we have to pass it to control the cost of Medicaid. Medicaid was spiraling out of control and it was forcing us to raise taxes then at almost 10%. 8.4% we raised the property taxes in 1994. Saw no hope on the horizon of getting relief from Medicaid. So we said we've got to do something to be fair about the cost of paying for Medicaid. It could not be borne on the backs of property taxpayers. So we petitioned the state to allow us to institute a 1% sales tax. Part of the agreement was we would share that sales tax with the municipalities, giving them $600,000 according to the same formula that they got out of the 3%, as long as we could and still control Herkimer County property tax levy. We were able to hold the Herkimer County property tax levy secure and safe until 2002. Starting in 2002, the Herkimer County property tax levy jumped 6.9%, 5.6%, 10 10.87, 16.57, 13.31 because of Medicaid. So then we said we can no longer share that $600,000 with the municipalities. So if we're going back, trying to give this back to them, we're going back to doing the one, only thing we can do, and that's to put the Medicaid cost back on property taxpayers. So if you think that's the fair way of doing it, and be Santa Claus for the municipalities, great. But uh, uh, that is not the way I propose we should do it. Any other comments? Mr. Hart. As tempting as it is to uh, say, Mr. Of course, on the subject, I'll refrain from that. We've done it from time to time over the course of the year. You know, if I disagree with him, he disagrees with me. That's fine. Um, I, I like to say that um, last Saturday I had the opportunity, myself and Mr. Brzezinski, to tour Northern Safety with Senator Schumer. Um, Senator Schumer was there to talk about the veterans tax credit for hiring veterans. It's an, an act of, it was enforced this year. Unfortunately, it's on the cliff for next year. Hopefully, both veterans tax credits will uh, live. Uh, not fall up over the cliff. But I wanted to point out Northern Safety is the first time I had been in the building and it's uh, quite a success story in one of our industrial parks. Um, they're a growing company. They drove all of us there Saturday. They're committed to keeping jobs in Herkimer County, keeping jobs in New York. They're buying, they have bought some companies down south, but um, they're going to they're gonna stay here with us. Um, and they're committed to hiring with veterans. I just want to point out that it was a great company and a success story. The kind of company we want to see come to Herkimer County and um, I, I give them all, give them a lot of credit. Speaking of Santa Claus, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Mr. Mr. Chairman, on that same subject, they, they, I guess, purchased that vacant building on the corner uh, of the industrial park toward Wells Bush Road, right. so that, that was great. That was, that was really, that was really nice. That was really good for the good. industrial park. I just want to say I was invited to that, but I was, I was only given a 45-minute notice to get there. So, uh, we uh, all I know, so, uh, but I was only able to time. Mr. Hyde. I wonder if we could uh, ask the uh, director of uh, public health if she could give us some statistics on how many influenza shots were given out this year, how many were paid participants. So we have an idea, and whether or not the man hours that are involved in that program covers our costs. Can we get that? She, 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 she left, but we could have her email it to everyone. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, today I was in a local uh, food establishment and some people came in that uh, had just returned from Albany and I guess it's that uh, economic development.
Development Council or wherever the offices were today. This was in our mail, and I'm hoping that this is the dis the distribution of the 60 million that we're going to get. Just gonna oh, good, it. because well, it's pretty well, exciting news, yeah, and that 60 absolutely. million would be nice to have it be more. But I'm loving to see that the uh, we were supposed to have the meeting on Valley Health and what was happening over there, and we were waiting to see what would be happening on this grant. And, that's and I'm hoping that we're going to have a meeting to talk about that enthusiastically. I just want to bring it up right now. Uh, Myself, Mr. Fien, uh, Dr. Murray, and uh, Lisa Beatrice took a ride too. We were invited to uh, Albany today for the award presentation. Uh, we, we we got there and uh, you know we went through the presentation and we were, we were a little shocked when we learned what you know the, the valley uh, portion got and it was a total of uh, uh, fifty-nine point seven million dollars, which is still a great uh, chunk of money. We thought we'd be in the, in the full running, but uh, again we were. Just a little short, but uh, still, if you look at those lists of, of the projects that were funded, uh, Herkimer County, out of the $59.7 million, received a total of $5,772,250,000. Now, you could add a couple more uh, projects that were lumped in with other counties, so there's another 300000 which you could lump in with that, and uh, so that, uh, out of that, that's 9.7% of the total pot that was given out. So that's a pretty good chunk of change compared to what we got last year. Uh, out of the 14, out of the 70 projects that were funded there, 14 of them were Herkimer County uh, projects. And if you go through the list, some of them are, are, are well needed. Uh, you know, there's the, I'll go through them real quick. The City of Little Falls, the redevelopment, the Black Ranch, 245000 the IDA uh, received a, a $50,000 small uh, business revolving loan fund, which is hit, it's had great impacts. The one that uh, Mark Butler funded uh, for us, we received $50,000. That's gone around around about 23 or four times. It's spurred about five to $600,000 worth of projects uh, along with, with new jobs. So this other additional $50,000 will couple with that. Uh, it's the biggest bang for the buck. It's, it's a great little program. Uh, Old Forge Properties, uh, which is going to put a biomass uh, wood chip uh, system up uh, in uh, Water Safari and uh, Cross Street Water's Edge. Uh, they received $1 million. Uh, great news there. Uh, the Strand Theater in Old Forge, $25,000 for some updates. Uh, Town of German Flats for their park uh, adjacent to the Florida Herkimer Church, $150,000. Town of Herkimer for their sewer project, which is great news for industrial development, $500,000 there. Uh, turbo machines in Herkimer uh, for some uh, parts uh, that they make jet engines over there. Uh, that's ESD money, that would be $100,000. Uh, Valley Health Services, which is the largest single uh, project uh, on the list uh, of $1,829,750. So, uh, a big, uh, a big uh, victory there, and we look forward to working with them. Uh, so that the reason that was delayed is because we didn't know what was going to happen here. If that didn't happen, then there was no sense in having a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Village of Frankfurt received fifty thousand dollars for a uh, Main Street uh, facelift type thing. Uh, Village of Herkimer, Bellinger Brook Culvert rehab, two hundred twenty-five thousand um, dollars. Village of Mohawk uh, again with a with a. Uh, I believe a kayak and canoe launch, uh, 22500 the village of Mohawk uh, for another facelift of, of, of facades and things and storefronts, uh, $75,000. Uh, Burroughs Paper, um, to upgrade their facilities, uh, they've got a $21.6 million uh, upgrade there, uh, that'll be $550,000, and Garrett Tree Top, um, will have a nine hundred fifty thousand dollar award so those are our huge numbers we you know what on the way back we were sort of uh just made, we went out there and we just got the big number we just got that 59 7 and we said well why did we come out here and as we were coming back we were getting bits and pieces of it and during lunch we had lunch uh we, we learned of the 1.8 million and then at five o'clock this came out so i had them put this on your desk so i'm excited uh it'll go a long way and uh i want to Thank everybody who was involved. It was a long, drawn-out process, uh, but uh, we, we reaped some fruit out of the deal. This is Rose. Mr. Chairman, um, this is such great news. And I think one of the things that came out this week, and I'm wondering if this body, one of the committees, will be uh, looking at, reassuring, investigating, or guessing uh, 
um, I guess we don't want to guess, about what the impact is and what's happening with the Remington Arms and what's been announced, and in what form we might be certain that we're staying alert. We've been in contact with them. They, you know, um, the legislature? I, 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 I've talked to, uh, uh, I've put a call into him. Just, I've talked to him early on other things, but uh, I've called him. Uh, he has a return phone call. Here he is. He is the plant manager, uh, Palmer's, and uh, it's about, uh, not about, it's fluid right now in, in light of the situation. Uh, we'll let the dust settle, and uh, we are going to be, we are cognizant. I talked to Mayor Stevens on it, and I told him anything we can do, and he, vice versa, uh, if he needs us to do anything, we'd be glad to help him out. Uh, I guess it's critical. It's critical to see what where we're headed with this. I mean, the jobs in our area are so critical. The lives that are impacted, <coughs> lesser level, but still a significant amount of money has gone from this county to try to keep that program viable and it's enthusiastic. I know people have just recently been hired there, and um, any reassurances that we can gather, uh, true reassurances, and not just feel good, is going to be certainly helpful. So I'm glad. To so pay we're on top of it, and uh, we'll let you know when we hear anything, Mr. Department. I uh, was thinking of the arms. I did get a chance to talk to uh, Senator Schumer about that, and he's really pushing uh, the arms, and he thinks uh, that contract that they had to leave the bid, he thinks that we're still in good shape for the arms. Are so All right, anyone else? With that, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Uh, look forward to working with you all and uh, stay safe. And Mr. Russell. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, one, I'd like to thank you and your wife for hosting the party the other night. And um, I think there was some money raised during that, and I was just curious what it came out to be. You are correct. Uh, as, but, you know, like we try to have a, a legislator's Christmas party every year, and in the past, what we've done, we've had an option at the end of the year. Uh, it, and, and it's a good time, you know, we, we bring gifts, a couple gifts each, and uh, some of our gag gifts, and we, we have a good time with it. But we raise a lot of, a lot of money. We pick a charity every year. And uh, in light of the uh, Hurricane Sandy relief effort, we decided to donate the money there. And right now we're a little bit over $1,600 uh, we, we raised in that auction, and there are a couple more uh, checks coming in. So it will be, we'll be in good shape. Uh, so I, I appreciate what you've done. Uh, again, it's, it's people helping people, and uh, that's what we're about. And I'm glad uh, we did high. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. That concludes our business for the year 2012. I move to be adjourned to Wednesday, January 6, 2013, at 2 p.m. That's our first quarterly meeting in 2013. And Happy New Year to everybody. That might be the ninth. I believe it's the ninth, yes. Okay, I stand corrected. Motion.